صباح الخير جميعا Good morning السلام عليكم عفوا Mr. Ala, so Mr. Ala, you have a problem with this sound? So you need to connect to the, to the audio. Ala or Ala, okay. There is also a problem with the audio. Hi, Melissa. Good morning. Hi, good morning. How are you? Okay, thank you. So, um, so do you do you all speak English? Yes, I do. Great. Great, yeah. Because this session will be in English. It's not like yesterday's sessions. They were in Arabic. No problem. Great. Yeah, glad to have you. Your students uh, who might be interested in studying in the U.S. So thank you all for joining today, and please uh, share your questions in the chat. Feel free to also be a little bit engaged. There's reaction buttons, so you know, clap thumbs up or whatever at any point. We know that Zoom fatigue is a real thing, so we want to make this as interactive as possible for you. So thank you for joining. I pull your presentation. Sure, you are muted, Ishraq. She's muted. You are muted. Yes, can you, can you hear me? Yes. Now, yes. Yes. I, I, I hope that uh, there will be no internet connection uh, and stability because I couldn't hear you well, uh, Asil. Oh, sorry. Okay. 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 Go ahead. And if there is any problem, I'm going to let you know. But do you all see my screen? Yes. Now that's fine. Okay. Great. Yes. Thank you, Asil, Melissa. Thank you for um, the participants to attend uh, our webinar about TOEFL. Uh, my name is Ishraq Zabi, and I am the Academic Relations Regional Manager in uh, the MENA region. Uh, you can see on the screen my email. So if you have any questions in the future or after the presentation and you'd like to, uh, or any comment that you'd like to share, it is most welcome and we are um, by the way we take any um we take into consideration any comments or feedback come from the um, comes from the um, counselors teachers supervisors that will help us to develop and improve our uh, test at all levels so uh, today what we are going to talk about is the uh, TOEFL and as we know that the TOEFL is for the native uh, non-native speakers so um, we have some points that we want to discuss in this presentation. Yes, Asil? Yes. Yes. So we are going to talk about the TOEFL IBT as a test uh, overview. Then um, the test is accepted, how it's accepted uh, worldwide, the test experience enhancement TOEFL IBT special home edition, which comes in reaction of the COVID-19 outbreak. Then we are going to talk about registration, uh, about uh, the sections of the test, scoring and test prep resources that all the all the time that the teachers the students counselors ask for ask for and finally we will open the uh some time to uh, talk or to have some feedback questions and we will answer as much as we can on your questions 
So the TOEFL IBT test, IBT is, um, um, it uh, stands for in Internet Based Test. So the TOEFL IBT is used internationally and it is accredited by um, most of the universities all over the world. Okay, so here, as you see in the slide, of course, that the TOEFL IBT test is a computer delivered test. So it is an online test. We don't have a paper-based test from this uh, version, and it measures English language proficiency in the academic uh, setting. And it measures, of course, the four uh, skills, reading, listening, speaking, and writing. Uh, we, what, we, uh, what makes um, TOEFL IBT distinguished from other tests that we have the integrated questions that we will talk about in the coming slides. And of course, it's used as admission into colleges, universities that, that use the courses uh, um, in English, where the sitting uh, use the English language. Uh, plus, we have, uh, we have used this test and we are still using it for immigration, licensing and scholarships. Okay, so uh, every time we have a question, is the TOEFL test, TOEFL IBT test accredited or not? And if there are some uh, universities do not accept it, are there some countries do not accept the TOEFL? Well, the TOEFL, um, when we created the TOEFL IBT, it was created in 1964. And it, uh, it, it went through a certain development of the test till we reached to the um, uh, to the last version that we have it, which is online and computer delivered test. And it is accepted worldwide by more than 11,000 universities and other universities in over 150 countries. And it includes most of the countries and most of the continents, Australia, Canada, New Zealand, US, UK, and all across Europe and Asia. So we don't, we cannot say that the TOEFL IBT is not, for example, aggregated in the UK or in, for example, in Australia. Now we use it also for the immigration requirement to Australia so and in New Zealand as well so the TOEFL is accepted and is accredited everywhere 90% of the students who have taken the TOEFL test get their first or second choice a university and we have now more than 35 million people have taken this test okay and here we have the list of the can the let's say the continents and the countries that we use the TOEFL IBT and the TOEFL IBT test helps the student not only to when we ask the students to prepare the test we do not ask them just only to prepare the test for the sake of the test itself but it also helps them to prepare for their future for their future academic environment academic setting academic life so the TOEFL test the type of the questions that we have the format the content uh, the content helps the help the student to prepare themselves for the academic setting. It's not only just for the test itself. And that was um, 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 told by the uh, universities themselves. So they can see the difference between the students who have taken the TOEFL test and who have taken other tests. So they can see that there is a kind of um, a high proficiency of using the language, high uh, competency of dealing with the academic context. This is the most important part in the TOEFL IBT test. And uh, here we have some uh, key enhancements to the test that we developed the test in several ways at uh, several levels in order to make it uh, more flexible uh, to the students and to the um, counselors, to the teachers, to the advisors uh, all over the world. So we, of course, we have received sometimes some criticism, some uh, feedback about the length of the test, that it is too long, that the students could not focus. Sometimes the students themselves, the test takers say that this is very long test. We do not challenge the students to measure, for example, or to assess their, for example, their ability to go through a long test. So what we, what we did 
in um, just you know recently that we shortened the test. So when we when we have such a shorter test, it lessens the test takers' fatigue and may improve focus and performance because we want them to get better performance, not to you know uh, get them exhausted with dealing with the test itself. Plus, we have a criticism about uh, scoring, that the scoring, sometimes the students need to retake the test several times in order to take, a, for example, a certain uh, score. So in order to make it easier for the students, we uh, also uh, published for my best scores or super scores that help the test takers show their best uh, test performance. Also, the time that the students wait till uh, get their score reports, now it reached to six days. Also, we uh, focus on enhancing the speaking scoring, uh, scoring that combines between human raters and AI, what is the um, uh, artificial intelligence scoring for optimal fairness and uh, accuracy. And I will talk about that in the coming slides. Yes, here also what, uh, what we develop as well is the registration because before the students need, the test takers need, when they want to register for the test, they should use their laptop or desktop in order to register because there was like, let's say a kind of complicated software in order to keep the privacy of using uh, the registration um, software. Now uh, we upgraded the registration websites that save time for the students. We also um, come, we came up with TOEFL official app to manage the students' um, account from everywhere. We increased the capacity with afternoon testing on selected dates because in the past uh, we had only the morning uh, testing. So students can take the test, for example, at 10 till uh, 2. Now we have another uh, option, which is the afternoon testing, which started, for example, at 4 p.m. till 8 p.m., 7 p.m. It depends on the checking N. And also we reduced the retest waiting period that the students need in order to meet their urgent deadlines. And we extended the online registration to only two days instead of four days. For the preparation, also we added more TOEFL IBT uh, free practice test sets. And you can find all of this information in the uh, link below which is uh, for our website, ets.org, um, slash TOEFL slash better test experience. Now here, what you can see is that uh, the changes that we did on the uh, sections of the test, as we said that we measure the four skills. Here you can see that the reading, listening, speaking, uh, we have fewer lectures and fewer questions, whereas the writing, we keep it as it is. Uh, we started by uh, this change uh, from August the 1st last year. And if you see here that we have in the reading 10 questions, before it was like 12 to 14 questions. And of course, the time was shortened. And we have also for the listening, uh, three to four lectures six questions so students can focus to answer these questions on this limited number of lectures. And of course, the time was shortened. Then we have um, the speaking section. And the speaking section, instead of six tasks, we have four tasks. And we have one independent task and three integrated tasks. So the student can focus on, these, on the, this part, for example, to, to speak up about, for example, the independent question or the independent task and focus on these three integrated questions. Um, and the writing section, we have two tasks. We keep them as they are because we have only one integrated task and one independent task and the time is 50 minutes. So almost the total um, time for the test is like three hours for the students. Yes, 
Here, according to the out, due to the outbreak that um, we have the COVID-19, we, of course, we found lots of challenges and the students, the universities, all find lots of challenges in meeting the deadlines for the universities, the students also the same thing, because you know we were on lockdown, uh, people could not go to, um, the test, to the test centers, so everything was closed. The, let's say the fastest thing that uh, the solution that uh, ETS came with is the TOEFL IBT Special Home Edition, which we abbreviated for SHE, she. We say TOEFL IBT she. So this comes in order to take the test at home. Of course, when we come to this point, uh, students sometimes, parents, teachers are not so confident of taking the test at home. But we can, uh, as you can see here, that the TOEFL IBT the same one that you take in the test center is the same one that you take at, at home because we keep the same content, the same format, the same on-screen experience, some and the same features like the best scores, uh, for example, instant scoring for reading and listening, the same price, the same payment options, the same scoring and score reports. So everything, we keep it the same. Instead, the only thing that instead of going to the test center, you stay home and you take the test. The only, I can say that maybe one of, one of the, um, let's say, differences between the test center and the home that in the test center, when the students want to take the notes, they have scratch paper and pencil to write uh, down their note, uh, notes. But at home, they cannot use the paper the, you know, to write on. They use a whiteboard, we ask them, sorry, to get a whiteboard where they can use the marker in order to uh, erase it. Or they can use uh, the um, transparent uh, files where they can put a paper inside and they can write uh, with a marker. This is maybe the only challenge that the students can face um, at home. Other than this, it is the same uh, because when the students register for the test, they have the option to take the test at home and they only need to download the software, re you know, related to the test in order when they open the, um, uh, the test on the test day, we, they can open it on the same screen. Um, we have an agreement with uh, one of the biggest um, companies for proctoring called ProctorU. Proctor U. Uh, these are the ones who are responsible for proctoring the students. So when the student uh, wants to take this test at home, he just need or she just needs to have um, um, you know, a room with a table and a desk. It's not allowed, for example, to use a for example, a sofa or a bed, they need table and a chair. They have to use either desktop or laptop. They cannot take the test on their iPads or mobiles. Uh, the other thing, they need to have a camera. So if it's a laptop, it's built in and the same for the speakers. And if uh, and for the desktop, they need the 300, uh, 360 degree camera so the uh, proctor when they started when they started the test they asked them just uh, to go um, around the room to make sure that there are no um, related materials for the test uh, for example on the table no mobile used uh, of course during the test time and uh, no one also, uh, is there in the room, for example, nothing. Uh, sorry, sorry it's like your, your connection is getting locked. So we can't see you well. to the test, so they have to show their ID or their passport. Sorry, we can't hear you well because of sorry? your... Yeah, can you please repeat the last part because we couldn't hear you well. There was a problem with your connection. Hi, Shrak. Sorry, there was a problem with your can connection. You yes, yes, now we can. Yes, please. Yes. Yes, please go ahead. Just 
the 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 last uh, three sentences we couldn't hear them because there was a problem with your internet i'm sorry for that no we tried to fix that, but you know sometimes it's out of control sure okay Technology. <laughs> so uh, getting <laughs> yeah <laughs> So getting back to the TOEFL IBT special home edition, what I said that the students, we have to make sure that the room is free of the materials related to the test, no one in the room, uh, nothing written on the walls of the uh, room, and uh, of course, no mobiles allowed to use it. So these are the basics that we look for. And the proctor, um, the proctor asks the, uh, uh, the test taker to check also his or her laptop, for example, just we can see that uh, the task bar, for example, or the toolbar that they are not opening any related files to their test. If they find something like that, they just uh, close it. And if they are, um, in a way, uh, suspending of a certain thing, you know, which is, you know, show that there is a kind of cheating, immediately uh, they can stop the test and they, um, transfer the whole um, um, issue or the whole case to the Department of Integrity at ETS. So this is the way that they did it because that sometimes the students may not receive their scores and they start complaining saying that uh, we didn't receive our school uh, our scores that what is the problem you said that you will send it within six days or something like that the problem here that if they do not receive most probably they have problem with cheating and everything was transferred to should be transferred to the integrity department and they can send them that you know your case is transferred to the um, test integrity uh, and in this in this part we could not help them and they know themselves that we could not help help them because here uh, it becomes you know like an, a case of cheating so this is the difficulties that sometimes um uh, that the students face and they could, could not understand sometimes or they try not you know to show that they do not understand what's happening uh, what's happening um, there but in the test center it's easy because if the proctor uh, or the test administrator finds something which is you know unusual they can stop the students immediately this is the difference and um, also for the uh, IBT special home edition, um, uh, these students are, yes, of course, we, we, we uh, um, I think if you miss this one, we usually take a photo of, uh, of the face of the student. So uh, when they get their score report, uh, their um, photo should be there. Uh, the um, proctor also, the student cannot see the proctor, whereas the proctor, of course can see the students it is videotaped as well we can go to the next uh, slide as seen yes and also the uh, the uh, whole uh, test session is videotaped so in case that they find any kind of uh, suspe suspension they can uh, just check it and um, uh, also this is it's monitored uh, live it's not just only recorded and also we have the ai uh, technology used uh, in this case and we will, are going to keep uh, using um, the uh, TOEFL IBT special home till the end of this year. And then we can evaluate if we will continue with it as an option or not. Um, also now due to the outbreak, if there are some test centers, uh, for example, closed for a reason or another, students can reschedule their uh, tests from test centers to home without paying any extra fees and they have the they can choose or they can pick the test dates every sunday monday tuesday and wednesday and you can see here also the link that shows all the related information regarding the special home edition yes here, let's move on to talk a little bit about the uh, sections of the test. Of course, here, what we are uh, going to explain, you know, the main, um, let's say, points about the test. Whereas we have 
another workshop, but it should be face to face, unfortunately, because of the outer break, we cannot reach there. This, um, what we call it, Propel uh, Teacher Workshop. I don't know if you have an idea about that, but there what, where we can explain all the skills related to um, uh, the four uh, sections and we can give more uh, explanation. We explain about the type of the test, the format, and even as a teacher, how can, how can we help them in order to improve their, um, uh, let's say, um, um, their uh, own way of or their approaches in dealing with the four skills. So it is just an important um, workshop and hopefully, you know, after this pandemic, we can uh, reach to the teachers also in Qatar. Now, let's move on to the reading section. Yes, Asil. Thank you. Here we have the reading section where we assess how well the student can read and understand the kind of materials using in academic environment. So what we focus on is the academic setting. Um, of course, as I said before, we have three to four reading passages. The passages are approximately 700 words long, which means that the student should be ready dealing with some somehow long academic context uh, or passages. Each passage is followed by 10 questions each instead, as I said, 12 or 14 questions. And passages are excerpts from university level textbooks that would be used in introductions to a discipline or a topic. And we have variety of subjects, um, but of course, all of the information that the student need to answer the question is contained in the passage. So the student, when he has or when she has the the passage, they can have a look at it using, you know, the scanning, the skimming, uh, of course, um, uh, skills. And then when we ask the questions for this to the students, we uh, show them the passage and the question. The question. So the student knows that this question, okay, should be answers from this passage only. So he he doesn't need to go you know, to all the passage in order, you know, we don't want them to get to get lost. We just want them to focus on this passage where they can find the answer of this question. And the uh, type of the, uh, let's say the subjects that we have, um, of course, sciences like biology, um, chemistry, physics, um, uh, psychology, uh, we have literature, we have uh, history. We had like a criticism about why not more. And then we added also um, fields like marketing and business as well. So students can find a variety of. And all the time what we ask the students, we do not um, assess the, your knowledge as a student in a certain uh, field. What we assess is the English language proficiency, the ability to read, to understand, uh, to get, the, for example, the main idea, the um, inference, reference, uh, uh, for example, conclusion, negative fact. We have specific points which are based on, uh, um, uh, on the uh, basis of the uh, academic um, um, research in order to get uh, this, uh, this score. So we do not go and we do not measure, measure the students' uh, knowledge in uh, several subjects. This is what we always focus on. Plus, if there is, for example, um, a term, some, because we, we, we may find some terminology could be difficult for the students to understand. So we have a glossary feature towards the end of the passage that uh, you know, explains for the students what do we mean by this or by that. So that would make easier for the students uh, to understand the whole, um, the whole subject. And all of the passages that we use are authentic. We don't use anything, you know, from just from the imagination of these people who write the uh, tests. So this is very important to know to everyone to get to, um, to understand what we are doing in the reading section, because they all the time students, you know, we have, let's say, Lots of students complaining that they find that the reading section is difficult. No, but if the student 
train uh, himself or herself well in dealing with the academic passage they can you know they will be programmed how to deal with the academic passages and also when they go to the university it would be easier for them to deal with the academic passages in the uh, at the university now let's move to the listening section Listening section also, it measures the ability to understand conversations and lectures. And here what we focus on is, of course, for us includes a listening for basic comprehension, listening for pragmatic understanding, speaker like speaker's attitude and degree of certainty, connected, uh, connecting, synthesizing information. Now it is divided into two sections. We have the conversations and we have the lectures. The lecture, of course, everything used based uh, on um, campus-based language, but for the lectures, what we have, for example, a lecturer explains, for example, a certain theory to the students. This is number one. And number two, or a lecturer who explains about a certain, for example, assumption, theory, um, certain point, and there is a kind of um, discussion between a student, a student and a lecturer. And number three that we have is the conversation. Since that we are talking about the academic milieu, the academic setting, so we can find like a conversation between a librarian and a student, two students, a, libra a student and uh, for example, a professor asking about certain, uh, for example, process and so on. So in this way, we uh, make like a comprehensive um, measurement of listening for the classroom, for the conversations in the academic uh, academic uh, milieu. Now, for the speaking section, yes. For the speaking section, of course, it measures the ability of the student to speak English in an effective way in the academic setting. Um, here we have tasks resemble real life situations because when we um, made this, um, uh, when we made the research on how to deal with the speaking, uh, we took it from real life situations that uh, could happen, you know, in a class or, for example, in the at university city and so on. So the test takers here, what they prefer, and we found that the best way in dealing with the speaking is using the microphone. So the students do not need, the test takers do not need to have an interview. We avoid this way. Why? Because it could uh, be an uh, you know, it could be subjective. Uh, there, there should sometimes what happens that, you know, there could be no chemistry between the student and the interviewer. So that could affect on the student and on his or her performance in the speaking section. The best way is the student, for example, using the headset, listen to the question of some time, like, for like 15 to 30 seconds to prepare. So he has a paper and pencil, so he can write some points to discuss this question. And then we give like a beep where the student can start giving his response, which is 40, between 45 to 60 seconds. This is the way that we deal with the speaking. No interviews, no interviewer, no kind of, you know, this kind of interaction between the two people. What we have it is the microphone where the student can use it, answer his or her question only on the question that we ask. So we don't have like, a, like an introduction, hi, how are you, where do you live, and so on. Just the student go direct to the question, some time to prepare or to outline the main points that he or she wants to talk about, and that's it. In this, in this speaking, we have, as I said, four tasks based on academic topics or campus situations. For example, like, um, like, for example, a question about two students who are discussing, for example, schedule of their lectures, and maybe some one of them, let's say, has a problem in time management, so the other student could help in, for example, giving him advice. So we can ask the student, we can ask the test taker, what did you get from this uh, one? Talk about it. Well, was it uh, okay or not? Something like that. So we can make it, you know, in this, um, um, 
in this academic way. Uh, the independent task, as you um, see here in the um, slide, which means that we have a question about, you know, the uh, about uh, the student's opinion. What do you think, for example, of friendship? Let's say this is the way. So the student, where he can or she can, gives their opinion as um, as they want. Either it's right, it's wrong, I do agree, I don't agree, but if, for example, if he shows his agreement on a certain point, um, he should, you know, uh, know how to deal with, you know, um, focusing on, uh, on his point of view. For the integrated task, we make a mix, a mix, which is a combination between, for example, a conversation where the student listens to the, um, uh, you know, to this conversation, and then we ask the student to give, for example, this. I said this uh, 15 to 30 seconds to prepare what he um, understands uh, understands from that um, uh, from that uh, conversation, and then start speaking about what uh, he understood or what he got from that conversation. Why we do this? Because the students, this is what they use it in the academic setting. They listen to the lecturer, they need to talk, they, to speak, they need to discuss, they need to, uh, you know, uh, to absorb the information and so on. So we make like this kind of integration. And the same thing for the writing section, Yes, Asil. Yes. Sorry, I had for the writing it. section yeah. also, yeah. of course. We... Sorry, sorry. I was telling that well, your system is a bit uh, delaying the, the, the presentation on your screen. Go ahead. Go ahead, sorry. Ah, okay, okay. Thank you. Yes, for the writing section, as I said, it measures your ability to write in English in an academic uh, setting. So here, what we want from the students to present their ideas in a clear, organized way. Uh, the, the point that we know that our students get to learn how to, you know, write an introduction, you know, the body, the conclusion, how to make an outline, how to, you know, uh, show or to uh, present their ideas. We focus all the time about these things here. This is what we want to see also in their, uh, in writing their essays. And the same thing, we have the integrated and we have the independent. As I said, independent explaining their own personal experience, opinions, points of view. For the integrated one, they have to listen to a short lecture and read the passage. So when they read, for example, um, the passage, there is a theory which is, for example, different from the uh, lecture itself. Lecturer talk, talks, for example, about a certain uh, theory. So students should absorb, should understand what is the difference, what is the similarity between this theory and the other theory in this lecture, between what are the differences in this passage and the uh, differences here in the lecture, and then make a combination in writing his section. And this is what we need also in our academic setting in, at universities. This is what the students do. Okay, so they can listen to their lecture and then they need to read or speak up. So that's the point that we focus on. And that shows by, you know, by, and we, we were informed by the, by the um, universities that the students show their high competency, you know, who took the TOEFL test rather than the other tests. Why? Because of this integrated task that help the students, um, you know, uh, understanding and knowing how to make this kind of integrating this kind of combination between the, uh, the four skills. And of course, responses are typed using computer keyboard. They use the QWERTY uh, keyboard and they should also be in a way fast in order not to take most of their time. Now, uh, for us as TOEFL test, we provide all the time truly fair and biased scoring. Since that we are um, 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 the biggest uh, organization as a private organization for assessment tests, uh, assessments and tests all over the world, 
and we based uh, we are based everything or every research is, yeah, I'm sorry every test is uh, based on research rigorous research so here we sh we have to show you uh, how we uh, all the time uh, keep having fair and unbiased scoring. Now for re reading and listening, the students, when they read or listen, they respond to a multiple uh, choice uh, questions. We don't have any kind of writing in the um, uh, listening or reading. So students should answer the questions by choosing the right uh, answer. And it is scored by computer. So automated scoring can show the student towards the end of the test. They can see their scores in reading and in listening. For speaking and writing, since they are, that they are productive skills, we need here to use both. We need to use the electronic scoring engine, which we have a patent for it, and we have a human raters. And of course, each section receives a score from zero to 30. So 30 is the uh, full mark, and the section scores are added up to a total of zero to 120. So the full mark is 120. And there, is, uh, there are no unfair TOEFL test centers because the test centers are only, you know, receive these students. Um, we, they install the software of the test, only the software. And when we start the test, um, everything is centralized and transferred, you know, uh, automatically to and digitally to our, um, our organization network. So uh, test centers do not interfere in any, in by any way to the scores of the students. For the speaking sections also, as I said, we use the multiple human raters who do not know these test takers' identity, do not, you know, uh, focus on the accents of the students. If he is, for example, speaking American English or British English or uh, other, you know, um, accents, this prevents the bias that can occur in other tests when they use face-to-face -face interviews. And uh, universities, I also know they can evaluate applicants fairly using the TOEFL scores, and this is, is well known for them. And uh, another uh, thing that I want to say here that we, uh, the student will not have points subtract, uh, subtracted from incorrect answers. So all the time we ask the students to give the best guess. So if you have students who take the test, please let them know that we only focus on you know, the, um, the correct answers. We, don't, we do not go just only looking for the mistakes or the errors that the students uh, do, because we know that this is a, this is a, a test for non-native speakers. So they use the English as a second language. There could be, uh, you know, uh, you know, some uh, mistakes or some errors. And of course, when we score it, we put this into consideration. So, for example, when we have the, you know, the um, let's say the highest mark or the highest band of the scoring, we put in our, you know, criteria that there should. Uh, we can find, let's say, some lapses, some minor lapses, some minor mistakes, and we go uh, forth. So this is very important to, uh, to know the way that we score the test. Yes, Asil? Yeah, the other slide, please. Next slide. Yes. Here we have uh, an example of the test score. Of course, we don't have certificates for the TOEFL test. What we have only um, uh, score report, we call it score report. And as like any other uh, English language proficiency, it's valid for two years after you know the test date and the student um, receives after you know of course the students should have an account with uh, with ets when they receive their um, their score report, they receive it after six days of the test day in this way. So they have just only, you know, in the test taker, we have two forms. 
I have to explain this first. We have two forms. We have score report for the student and score report that should be sent to the, to the universities or to other institutions. For the score report of the students, as you see here, we can see that, for example, the photo of the student was taken at the test uh, day. We have also uh, the, um, Yes, this one, please. We have the uh, uh, information about the student, like his name or her name, uh, email, date of birth, uh, the ETS ID, because every student has an account with ETS, has an ETS ID. And we have here the scores that I will explain it later, how to show, you know, my best scores in case the student take it. And we have um, explain also, we explain to the students some points of, you know, um, uh, strength and weaknesses that he did in the, uh, in the test. For the, um, te for the, um, score report that's sent to the institutions. We don't explain uh, to the institution what are the, um, for example, the weaknesses and the strength of the students in the test. We just show them, you know, the uh, score, the scores that they get in the same way that we have it. Now, when the students send the TOEFL scores, usually they send it from ETS directly to the institutions. So the student do not inter the students do not interfere in you know receiving this um, score report and send it by themselves to the university. What we have is an order. We have something, an option in the account saying sending orders. Okay, so the students send their order of the score report to the institution. For example, we ask them in the um, in the um, account. For example, when they register or when they take the test, would you like to send your score report? to institutions if yes okay they will have you know a screen shows for example country uh, for example state um, university and code so once they click for example their country is United States the um, state is for example Virginia the university is for example Virginia Tech and then it will show them the code they click so they uh, it shows them the code uh, the code and it depends sometimes on the uh, schools in this university for example school of engineering school of medicine and so on so they click on the code of course we have an agreement with these universities to use this service so immediately once the once the students um, you know goes with this um, with this process ETS okay receives the order and send the uh, score report to the institution directly in a special form, as I said before. This is the way that we deal with sending TOEFL scores to universities. Before the test, the student has the right to send this score report to four institutions for free. Okay, that's for free, so the students can send it. After the test, their, their students should send uh, this uh, score report for and they have to pay $20. So we give this option to the students before the test if they are um, sure that they can get this score. All the time, what we tell the students, if you are not sure that you cannot get this uh, score, don't send it, okay? Until you make sure that you get uh, the score that this, the university asks for. In uh, our tests, at ETS, we don't have fail or pass. What we have is a score. And the schools determine their own TOEFL scores requirement, not us, not ETS. So for example, some universities would require for 70, others for 110, one for 45. So it depends on the universities themselves. And all the time, what we ask the students, please ask the officers at universities you know, the admission officers, what is the required score report for exam a score that I should take? Because some universities could ask only for total score report. Some universities ask, for example, to get specific certain scores uh, in each skill, for example, reading 25, speaking 23, um, re writing 27, uh, reading 28, and so on. It depends on the universities. We do not interfere in this part. We leave it to the, um, to the schools, to the universities. So the students need to check that with the uh, admission offices. Yes, please. 
Here, you can see how the student select score recipient. This is just to explain um, how uh, they can just add to their score recipients and you know to fill in the blanks. And uh, we have a part called scoring reporting preference for yourself. So either the student can receive it as an online and download it as PDF, or he can get a paper copy mailed to him or to her. Now, the point that in the paper copy, because some students you know, do believe, especially in our Arab world, do believe that they have to get this paper copy. We all the time, we say that this paper copy is the same one that you have it, you know, in the Online score, uh, uh, online score report. The point that sometimes, the, because we deal with the post office of the country, we don't deal with DHL or FedEx, Aramex, and so on. We deal only with this, uh, with the post uh, offices of the uh, countries, and because of that, it it may take longer, uh, from six to eight weeks, and sometimes could be lost in the post office. But we are not responsible for that because that what ETS, what we are doing just uh, you know sending the score reports as a hard copy but sometimes they do not get and all the time we ensure you know to tell the paper copy sometimes difficult you know to receive in a way so it could happen that you know lost in the post office and we are not responsible for that yes now let's move to the my best to my best scores. My best scores we call it also super scores. In uh, my best scores or super scores, this is one of the development that we did for the test because we need to show the best performance of the test taker. So we make like a kind of combination of the highest section scores from the valid test states. There should be valid. And these score reports show both my best scores and the scores from a single test date. And it's included, it is included in all score reports since um, the 1st of August uh, 2019. So here, for example, we, we can show you an example how we, um, how we combine the best scores as you see here. For example, a test taker needs not 18 in each section and 80 in total. So in order to meet the score requirements with valid scores and without taking that test, for example, third or fourth time. So we combine it. As you see here, for example, reading, he gets um, 20, whereas the, the test date was less, the listening 22, the test date uh, for the second test um, or the second session was less, whereas for speaking and writing, the first test was, you know, the performance was less than the performance in test date. So what we, we do, just we combine the highest mark, we collect, we gather the highest mark, reading 20, listening 22, speaking 20, writing 9, so um, this student can get, you know, higher score report that he needs for the admission requirements. So this is the way that we make it a easier for the students uh, uh, as well. Yes, please. Yeah. Here we have, this is the way that automatically included all the score reports. So all score reports sent after August the 1st, 2019, regardless the test administration date, for example, if he had taken the test maybe in February, 2019. So we include both my best scores and scores from a single test date, as you see here, for example, this is student, took the test on the 23rd of October, 2019. This is... Sorry, we lost you for, uh, for a minute, for seconds, and then we can see you. But we can't hear you. Yes, go ahead, please. Yes. So, yes. 
So here, my best scores, as you see, we can, you know, combine all the scores from, as you see here, your highest section scores from all valid test dates as of December 11, uh, 11, 2019. So the sum of the highest section scores is, for example, 87 for the students. And we can show that uh, on the um, on the score report of the students. So th this is what the institutions, you know, received from ETS, which shows that my best scores of the students. Yes, please. Yeah. Also for faster score report, uh, we started that last year. So the test taker can view their scores online approximately six days instead of 10 days. And institutions can view scores online in approximately six days instead of 13, like almost two weeks. And the test takers also can download their PDF just after you know receiving the test because they received the test uh, score on the sixth day after the test. So on the seventh day, they can uh, uh, you know, uh, download the PDF and they can print it out. Paper score reports also are sent to institutions between you know, nine to 11 days. And when we say nine to 11 days, it means that sometimes depending on um, if there are any holidays in the US. So any delay could happen because of holidays in, in the US, not in the country that the student take uh, test. And when we talk about the days, we talk about you know, days, calendar days, including, you know, weekends. We don't mean uh, just only working days. This is very important also for the, um, you know, for you to know. This is for getting your score report as a student. Yep, please. Uh, let's also uh, focus on the speaking scoring because all the time when we talk about the scoring and because um, we found that so many times that, you know, people are so confused with the speaking scoring and how we deal with it because still that they have in their minds the interviewer can evaluate um, the um, interview with the test taker in a better way. But here we can, um, we can, uh, we can tell that we, you know, spend a lot of, uh, and we put a lot of effort on improving this part of uh, speaking. So um, what ETS, we have what we call it speech rater service, which we, uh, where we use the artificial intel uh, intelligence technology in order to assess and provide feedback on the several on several points like pronunciation, fluency, vocabulary, and grammar. Then we make a kind of combination between the AI, the artificial intelligence, and the human raters in order to evaluate the content, the meaning, language use provide, and language, uh, language use, which provides a natural accuracy and uh, reliability. And also, uh, speaking section score now based on more ratings. We have eight than before where only six and four human ratings plus four speech ra rater ratings. So no other major English language proficiency test combines the benefits between the AI and the human, uh, uh, human scoring uh, for speaking and writing. This is very important to know to be you know, uh, by, the, um, by the people. And also we have speaking scores. Um, as I said before, that we do not look for the mistakes that the students do because our scoring is holistic. So we score it holistically. Human narrators use the rubrics to evaluate. You can find that on our website um, and you can even Google it. You can find, for example, you can uh, write just only type independent speaking rubrics uh, with ETS and you can find our uh, rubric. The rubric here is divided, for example, I, I'm just giving an example uh, from zero till four, and then we uh, scale it from zero to uh, 30. And we have a special calculation for that. Here, what we focus on as a human raters is the general description, delivery language um, use, and uh, topic uh, development, the 
points that we focus. In, in band four, which is the highest one, we can find, if we read it, if you go and read it uh, on the website, you can find that there are minor lapses, minor errors that happen by uh, the uh, students. But, but it could, uh, it, it is the highest one. Then, uh, you know, the more that we have, you know, um, weakness in delivery, in language use, in topic development, okay, we go uh, down and down till zero. Zero, it means that the student do not use, uh, the students or the students, the test taker does not use English language, something which is um, definitely is not, um, understood so or he does not show any attempt to respond uh, or something which is unrelated to the topic the way this is the way that we go uh, through uh, scoring the uh, speaking um, section and we have one for the independent and we we have other one for the integrated because there is a kind of a difference on what we focus on since that the integrated we need uh, to focus on uh, also the the coherence of the discourse itself uh, for the uh, writing as well for the writing score the same thing what we have one for the independent the other for uh, the integrated in the independent writing rubric of course we score we score it holistically we have to focus here on the development of the ideas organization quality and accuracy of language use in the integrated writing rubric we have quality of writing completeness and accuracy of response and as i said that we have a special rating okay we have a special rating from zero till five in the speaking from zero till four in the writing we have from zero till five from the rubrics and uh, converted to a scaled score from of zero till 30. So what the raters do, they use this rubric. We, we, we do not, for example, they do not use anything um, uh, outside of this context. So they use it. Of course, they are certified. They are trained according to a very uh, rigorous uh, training in order to score it um, correctly, accurately, and properly. And um, uh, of course, um, you can see this, uh, these, uh, as I said, rubrics, the student can also see it because sometimes the student could ask, okay, what should I focus on? How will they score it? Who knows how they will score it? So this shows that, of course, as I said, we use the engines in order to um, score the uh, spelling mistakes, punctuations, and so on. And we put into considerations, as I said, the lapses and the errors that may happen if it's not uh, if this um, type of um, mistakes uh, is not, for example obvious and it does not affect on the um, uh, on the uh, whole uh, context whole passage whole essay so we go to the highest mark and of course through that we have a benchmark which is the point of reference where the uh, raters use and then we have uh, the responses of these students. Of course, in our Propel workshop that I talked about earlier, we can show that to the teachers uh, and we can give them the opportunity even to, uh, to have uh, or to be trained with this uh, type in, let's say, in a, in a simple way. Now let's move to the registration. Uh, of course, uh, every student, every test taker wants to take the test. They should create an account. They should sign up. They should write their uh, information um, correctly and uh, properly. Not, for example, using nicknames. They should use they should use their names or they should type write their names the same way that they have it in the uh, passport or in their identity. And uh, uh, of course, they can use uh, the website itself. I will show it in the next slide. Uh, next sli slide. But here they can use the top official app where they register from anywhere on any mobile device just they need to download it with this icon uh, from their app store or google play and it would be easier to show them lots of information like for example test centers which are nearby and powered by google maps
yeah, here we have the, uh, uh, let's say, the page that the, the students can use and we can also advise our students to use it. So here they can sign up, but as I said, they have to fill their information uh, in a proper way and in, uh, in a cor uh, correctly as well. Yeah, here the uh, website, that we use it, www.ets.org slash mytoefl. As I said, this is very important because lots of students sometimes, I have to say this, that we found that so many students can use just nicknames or initials. They do not write their names in the, um, in the correct uh, or in the right blank. So sometimes they use their use first name, second name in the first blank, the third one they leave it, for example, the third blank they leave it uh, bl uh, blank. So that creates a lot of problems for them. We cannot change the uh, name. We cannot update the date of birth other than this could be updated. So this is very important also to tell our students about. And of course, ET Yes. Uh, put uh, into consideration uh, how to deal with the people with disabilities. So any student, any test taker has a disability and wants to take the TOEFL test, ETS um, can help. And just the student uh, who has this disability uh, send, uh, you know, the medical reports to ETS through the website that's shown towards the end of this slide, where ETS can uh, secure um, uh, all the facilities for the students with these disabilities. Now, the best way to success is using the resources of the ETS, okay, for the TOEFL IBT, because all the time, this is what the students face, that they do not have, you know, uh, or they do not know how to get, you know, the best resources dealing with their TOEFL itself. So the first uh, resource that we have is TOEFLGoAnywhere.org. This is an important and a very useful um, web, uh, let's say, um, link uh, that uh, website's contents include um, all the related information like destination directly uh, search, registration information, preparation tips and resources, also how to plan, how to practice, any updates that we have, we have a plug and towards the end of this slide, if you see that just, you know, um, like an icon of a messenger where the student, the teachers, anyone can click and ask this, the question and ETS um, customer service answer the questions that uh, the people uh, need to know. This is for the TOEFLGoAnywhere.org. And of course, we are going uh, to create very soon a um, um, microsite, let's say, in Arabic. So it will help the students also. If you know that there are some students, we will provide them with um, in-language uh, information. Um, here, the TOEFL destination directly, where there, we have here two parts, quick search, for example, search by institution, name or location for the student can enter the name of the student, uh, sorry, the name of the institution, or he can or she can, uh, for example, uh, click on the location, for example, Doha, and they can see what are the uh, universities accept the TOEFL, what are the schools that accept the TOEFL IBT test, where with their DI code that I uh, talked about it earlier. Also, the student can here enter the uh, work and he or she can see, for example, fill the level of study, country, state, region, city, and so on, and search uh, in the universities, in the schools that he can go through. And we have like 11,000 institutions that accept that and deal with this uh, way. And uh, yes, let's move. Mm -hmm. Also, we have a page on Facebook where the students can find uh, uh, test skills, building tips, study videos, any preparation, uh, mat preparation materials, including free samples, and also any feedback, any comment. It's 
anyone, advisors, students, agents, teachers, counselors can uh, also share with it. So just what they need to follow this page, which is also administered directly from ETS in the USA. And we have also a page that we can follow on Instagram as well at TOEFL underscore official. Also, we have another one on, uh, yes, on LinkedIn, where, you know, connect with people, sometimes test takers, uh, even uh, if they are, for example, not only students um, at schools or at universities, sometimes, you know, postgraduate share their experiences and their, um, they can also give some tips that uh, they found it was useful that uh, they want to share with the people as well. And we have a channel on YouTube. This is very important. And we advise all the time students to go through youtube.com slash TOEFL TV. Even teachers can use it and they can uh, watch um, the success stories. And what we have is the inside TOEFL test videos to learn more about the test sections. Yeah, next slide. Yeah, this one. Video series gives in-depth look at reading, listening, speaking, and writing. Our colleague Michael Knapp explains all the related information that the students need. Even the teachers can also, the counselors, the advisors can also uh, watch them so they can know better about the question structure, the criteria of the scoring. Uh, we have sample responses. Uh, we have the tips and the strategies that they need to use it, but it should be inside the TOEFL test with Michael Knapp. And also uh, you can sign up to receive updates, either visit this uh, link or scan it join the TOEFL test taker mailing list. So just you fill it and you will receive all the notifi notifications or updates that we have for the TOEFL IBT test. Also we have, uh, because all the time, for example, um, so many students, teachers ask, don't you have courses uh, or specialized courses for the TOEFL IBT. Well, we, because we are a research organization, we and we focus on the assess, you know, to assess or to measure the student's ability to understand, to use, etc. Uh, these skills, we do not interfere in the courses uh, themselves. We leave the floor, as we said, the floor is yours. You can use all the materials. You can uh, Google, you can read in books. You can, uh, for example, look into the uh, strategies of how to deal with the writing skills, with the speaking skills and so on. But in order just to help as tools, what we say is we have some tools to help in order just to guide the students, to orient the students how to deal with it, even the teachers, that we have, for example, MOOC, Massive Open Online Course, which is a free self-paced course that is designed by the experts who are talking about the test because they are the creator of the test themselves. And it is in cooperation with EDX. And yeah, we give an introduction of the test and each section providing with short videos lectures with the with sample questions, with the past quizzes or past tests, and receive skills core range of for speaking and writing. So what we need just only to enroll in the TOEFL Insider's Guide, and it is for free. So whenever you have time, you can uh, watch it. And if you have any feedback, you can use our social media channels. Also, we have some free tools like TOEFL IBT free practice test, where it where is a full test for the four sections, but from retired test questions, 
So in order to make the students familiar with the test for math questions, because all the time we said that there are so many students who are very proficient in English language, but they need at the same time to know about the type of the test in order to save their time. So sometimes it is a matter of time management. They need to save their time. So they need to know about the questions type and format. And then in the test itself, what they have is the content, but because they are programmed, they know how to deal with the format, they would find the test easier for them. And in the TOEFL IBT free test practice test, we can view also correct answers in the, for the four sections, listen to samples for the speaking and the write and see, uh, you know, and read the sample rewriting uh, responses. Also, we have TOEFL IBT practice sets. Also, this is uh, show some questions and it is in PD uh, format. And the last one here is the uh, test prep planner, TOEFL IBT test prep planner. It is a free uh, downloaded uh, book and it is a give like um, uh, eight week preparation for the plans, for the tips and activities to build uh, the four activities it would be useful for the teachers as well to know how to plan if they want to get any information any tips in dealing with these skills at the same time for the students before uh, going or before planning to let's say to take the test on a on a certain date also we have we have uh, in uh, we have here some TOEFL test preparations but for purchase like the books we have two books the official guide to the TOEFL test and uh, uh, we have two one in red if you see the red book and the uh, the blue book the blue book the official guide to the TOEFL test uh, it is um, comprehensive test to prep handbook and it contains uh, three tests uh, where the student can practice them, where they can find the explanations about this test. And the official TOEFL IBT, the red one, we have uh, two versions and we have five practice tests in, uh, in, this, uh, in this book, also with full explanation about, you know, the answers, the responses, the samples, the rubrics, everything related to the test. And then we have what we call a TPO, which is TOEFL Practice Online. This is a complete online practice test that the students may need, uh, they may need to have it in order to know, for example, what is the score that they can get it, get it in the real test. So they can make this kind of practice. And also sometimes because we know that the, <coughs> sorry, the students, you know, take the test uh, want to take the test when they register they can get like TOEFL value packs with you know certain discount on the official preparation books and these books we can find them as a hard copy and as ebooks the students can you know uh, buy it from the uh, website itself or from Amazon or other uh, uh, ebook uh, references or websites Yes, next slide. Yeah. Also, we have global official app, TOEFL Go. This is an application uh, that the student can download it from App Store or Google uh, Play. And it gives them the most important uh, information, like, for example, tips, scoring information, uh, preparation essentials. They can have a free uh, sample questions and they can purchase even the practice sorry Shrek, there was uh, there was connection problem and now you are unmuted <clears throat> this is for yes yeah, because it is automatically muted me, I, uh, yes. I, I yes. unmute it yeah. now. So yes. this is very important for the student just to download it. Yeah, that download it in, uh, on their mobiles.
And here, this is a useful link where the teachers, advisors, uh, counselors can use ets.org slash TOEFL slash teachers dash advisors dash agents slash advantage. And for the destination appendixes, appendix, we have um, here uh, about the U.S. I can because one of um, uh, one of of course the countries that you know accepted everywhere the TOEFL IBT. So here more TOEFL scores are sent to the United States than all other English tests combined. So the TOEFL test is the one of that universities are most familiar with, and this is according to a survey that ATS. Uh, um, has done with admission officers at U.S. And the TOEFL is a preferred test by um, U.S. universities, so students can have the best chances. Nine out of ten universities in the United States, and not only in the United States, actually, in other countries as well, prepare the TOEFL test over other English language tests. And that was also a survey uh, shows that uh, the officers who accept Accept both the test, but who expressed a preference um, over other tests. Yes, here I will give you an example on uh, in order, you know, to towards the uh, finish to finish our um, uh, presentation here you have a passage that uh, was used in one of the tests for the writing section uh, you can read this uh, passage and i will show you uh, how the lecture uh, was given and then how we can make a combination between the two parts. So I will give you like two minutes just to scan this one, this passage, and then we will go to the uh, listening part for uh, it and to show you how the student um, just lay out how the students use this uh, in the writing section for the integrated part because we received lots of questions about how the integrated writing section works. So here I will give you like two minutes to just have a look at it, to read it. Yes, so this is just, you know, as um, an example of a passage that was given to the student in an integrated writing section. Now we can move, if you may, a seal to the, um, to the lecture in order to listen, to see the differences. So um, you can see the differences between um, the passage and uh, the uh, the passage and the lecture. Here is the lecture. Possibly be correct in every detail. 
No memoir can possibly be correct in every detail, but still, the Chevalier's memoir is pretty accurate overall and is, by and large, a reliable historical source. Let's look at the accuracy of the three episodes mentioned in the reading. First, the loan from the merchant. Well, that doesn't mean that the Chevalier was poor. Let me explain. We know that in Switzerland, the Chevalier spent huge amounts of money on parties and gambling, and he had wealth. But it was the kind of property you have to sell first to get money. So it usually took a few days to convert his assets into actual money. So when he ran out of cash, he had to borrow some while he was waiting for his money to arrive. But that's not being poor. Second, the conversations with Voltaire. The Chevalier states in his memoir that each night, immediately after conversing with Voltaire, he wrote down everything he could remember about that particular night's conversation. Evidently, the Chevalier kept his notes of these conversations for many years and, and referred to them when writing the memoir. Witnesses who lived with the Chevalier in his later life confirm that he regularly consulted notes and journals when composing the memoir. Third, the Chevalier's escape from the prison in Venice. Other prisoners in that prison had even more powerful friends than he did, and none of them were ever able to bribe their way to freedom. So bribery hardly seems likely in his case. The best evidence, though, comes from some old Venetian government documents. They indicate that soon after the Chevalier escaped from the prison, the ceiling of his old prison room had to be repaired. Why would they need to repair a ceiling unless he had escaped exactly as he said he did? Yes, now here we uh, listen to the lecture. So, and the uh, passage, and this is what the student face. So here I have to mention that the lecture, just only the students can listen to this lecture just only once, whereas they can see the passage uh, during the, uh, the test uh, time. And here you can see the direction that you have 20 minutes to plan and write your response. Your response will be judged on the basis of quality of your writing and on how well your response presents the points in the lecture and their relationship to the reading passage. Typically, an effective response will be 150 to 225 words, which means that we do not determine an exact number of words for the students. We leave it, you know, just like a suggested number of words. And the question, we give the question to the students, summarize the points made in the lecture, being sure to explain how they respond to the specific points made uh, in the reading passage and students also can show their opinion if they want, for example, to, to give, for example, like a kind of critical thinking while uh, they listen and read this passage. And of course, they use here, uh, they have the options like cut, paste, and do, redo, where they can write, and they have the word count. In the next slide, the last slide here, we can see the differences, uh, the students, how they should uh, make like, you know, the key points uh, for this task. For example, here R for lead, uh, reading and L for listening. So for example, like an example, and we here we highlighted the differences between what they listen and what they read. So for example, R the lawn, the chevalier, took from the Swiss merchant shows the Chevalier wasn't rich, whereas the listening, it shows that the Chevalier had wealth, but it was the form of property he brought only because it took a bit of time to convert his property to cash and so on. So you can see here the differences between um, the listening and the reading. These are the main points that the students should focus on, uh, the key points and uh, based on that, they can write their passage. This is just only a quick, example due to the time tightness that we have to show you the integrated task uh, writing and um, how the student write it and this is also is published on our website and we have sample uh, on it so you can also go uh, through it and uh, yes and for the independent writing it is 
simpler here in a way. Do you agree or disagree with the following statement? Always telling the truth is the most important consideration in any relationship. And we ask students to give specific reasons and examples, examples in order to support your answer to write their response on this task. So this is another example of the independent writing to show you how we measure the writing skills for the students at uh, both levels. That was just only an example on the writing because we received lots of questions about it. That's it. This is my presentation. I hope that you get the benefit of it. And now you have an overview, a comprehensive overview on the TOEFL IBT. Now we can open uh, the questions if you have. And I hope the connection will be stable as much as, as it's possible. So if Thank I may, you. so there were some questions in the chat box. Um, so one of the questions about the TOEFL is, is, it, uh, is TOEFL a diagnostic test, not a graded one? Do you hear me? Sorry. Ishraq, sorry, do you hear me? Can you hear me, Asir? Yes, I hear you, but you can't hear me. Do you hear me? No, now yes. Yes, okay, great. So there was a question. Uh, there was a question, is TOEFL a diagnostic test, not a graded one? Well, we cannot co consider uh, TOEFL IBT as a diagnostic test, but if, you know, sometimes uh, the, the point that we look for is to assess or to measure uh, the ability to understand, uh, you know, the, um, the sections that we want to discuss uh, in the uh, test. But if some universities want to use it at a diagnostic, yes, there are some uni universities use it in this way. Okay, there is another question. What is the difference between TOEFL and ILITS? Yes, this is the question that, uh, you know, most of the counselors, teachers, students ask for. Now, um, I think that also you will join an IELTS, uh, yeah, IELTS um, presentation in the coming uh, session. So you can see the differences, but what we can tell that um, through our presentation, I tried to show, you know, the differences. You can see the differences like the speaking section, uh, like the writing section, what, we have in it how we use the multiple choice in reading the type of the questions also the format that we use it which is quite different from the IELTS plus the TOEFL uh, we use in the TOEFL um, all the accents American um, accent British accent Australian accent we do not focus on a certain accent because the test is you know uh, is uh, an American uh, test coming from you know um, an American organization. So we try all the time as we are a research uh, uh, assessment uh, organization, we try to be objective. And even sometimes the student asks, which is better to take the TOEFL and IELTS or, you know, Duolingo or other tests, PTE and other tests, all the time we do not say, yes, go for the TOEFL. No, don't go for this or other test. What we do is just, we show all the advantages of the test, the fairness, the validity, the reliability of the test, and we we always say, you know, it is a personal preference. You may find that this test is the, you know, is um, is more suitable, more convenient uh, for the students. So just we encourage them to take it because we uh, look at this, uh, at this. We don't measure our test to be easy or difficult as much as uh, to be um, fair and valid for the students. Thank you. Uh, the other question is, how will students know if they need to take the TOEFL? Is, it a, is, is the criteria just if uh, they are not native uh, English speakers? Of course, there are some native speakers uh, want to, you know, to have a look and they can take the test. But because the test 
purpose is for the non-native speakers. This is the point because we measure it uh, from, you know, uh, from a second language uh, uh, viewpoint. We do not, you know, use the test for the first language uh, users. But if they want to to take it, of course, it's open to everybody. When do this, because also in the Arab world, I face that, um, like student ask me, okay, I want to take the TOEFL just to know what's TOEFL, just to keep the score report with me, just to keep it, just to know. Yes, they can. It's open for everyone. But at the same time, in order, we ask the students also if they are planning to go to universities and using an English language proficiency test, we also ask them to look at the test to look uh, at the you know to go and ask the universities what the admission requirement what the score requirement in order to save you know time and money and effort not only one thing so this is our uh, main uh, you know basic point uh, that we advise the students but some students want just to take the test because they know that they can learn a lot from dealing with this test from you know the strategies the tips that help them in the future in their academic future so we advise them also to take it if i may if i may add something so uh, maybe this question is maybe related to the idea of is it required by the university that the student applies to yeah, and I agree with Hassan who answered this question saying, yeah, uh, we attended lots of sessions with university representatives and they said that like schools that uh, are English language based, they, their instruction is English language based, just the student needs some type of certification or a letter verifying that the, that space like that and it's uh, they can uh, request a waiver and this might work. So Melissa, would you like to address this? Yeah, that was exactly correct. So especially for international students that have been studying um, their secondary in English language medium. So universities are flexible to the possibility of waiving that English language requirement test. Sometimes if the school medium of instruction is in English, but they've taken higher level English courses for a certain amount of time, that might be another opportunity to request that waiver. But again, it's really contacting the university, making that um, request. Some of them will put that information right with their requirements to say, if you believe you have, um, a, uh, you're in the situation for a waiver, please you know, contact this person or submit this. Um, so that's definitely one of the possibilities. Typically, it will be automatically included in there for international students in terms of providing some measure of English language proficiency. Thank you. Um, so the other question, the Propel TOEFL kind of workshop, is it um, for free or uh, does it have a specific cost? Yep. No, no, it's for free and we just, you know, uh, present this service to all, to all um, teachers all over the world. But the point of the Propel workshop is to have, uh, have it face to face because we have like um, interaction, we need the interaction of the teachers, we have posters to write on, we have to, you have in group discussions with the facilitator and with the uh, teachers and, you know, to listen to their uh, feedback, comments that help a lot to develop our test. This is the main point of the Propel. It's for free and the teachers usually receive a um, certificate for attending such uh, workshop. And we have, uh, you know, we have TOEFL workshops for TOEFL IBT, ITP, YSS, junior and primary. And also we have TOT, train of the trainers, for example, for a teacher who wants to be also a facilitator for the TOEFL uh, IBT as well. So it's free. Yeah. Okay. So there is another question and it may, it, it, it's more related to us rather than to TOEFL. So the question is, will all standardized tests be required next year in all universities? So, um, this, yeah. Yeah. so yeah. this Can is a big it. question. Yeah, this is a big question right now. I think there have been many institutions that have already announced their test optional status for the next academic year. And that's as a result of uh, remaining complications for accessing testing, for, you know, the closures of test sites, for inability to travel, those different factors do make it um, one of the things universities have to consider. 
because the US doesn't um, have a system that you would see in other places where there's a ministry that kind of mandates everything for you know, that particular sector, there are variations. So in everything, it does depend with the US higher ed, but I would say that a, a good number, large number of universities have already made announcements about being test optional. And there are a lot of discussions currently within the higher education sphere regarding whether or not that's something that will last a little bit longer um, than just the pandemic phase right now. They're looking at, you know, comparing if you have test optional versus test required, what are, you, what are they seeing in terms of the students that are being admitted, the applicants, the success rates. So I think it's a conversation that will continue. But again, the large majority that we've been seeing have started to make those decisions already, but it will be institution by institution. Okay, thank you. So the, the, the best resource is that you go to the website of the university and check on these and check in general with um, different universities. So the question, the other question that's related to Education USA, what are the admission requirements, the test scores required, and how much would it cost for the first year for the student to have this first year in this, uh, the schools in the States or universities, okay. colleges? Yep. So a couple questions in there, yes. Yep. <laughs> so regarding, regarding the test scores, um, I think one of the things that some students find frustrating is that they won't necessarily find a exact number for if I get this score on my test, then that means I can get admitted. And so what you will find institutions posting are the ranges. So what is the median score for students who are admitted to that particular institution? And that is because most of the institutions do follow a holistic admissions approach, which means the score, while it is an indicator, it's not the main indicator. And so you'll have students um, who score well above the, the median and you'll have some that maybe fall just under and there might be circumstances for that. So it's not a very clear cut way to um, figure out what school. So you, students should really be using those ranges. And then when they have a sense of their scores, if they've already taken it, that's where they can start to figure out, okay, is this a reach school for me? Is this kind of where I'm at? Or is this a safety school? So that's where that whole process comes into play. Um, with cost, the costs of uh, tuition rates vary tremendously. Um, a lot of students who do have uh, finances as one of the key factors in making decisions of institutions, one of the options that we do promote uh, is community colleges and a two plus two program. Now for Qatari students in particular, this is a challenge because a lot of the, the, their degrees have to be obtained at an institution that's recognized and will get the equivalency from the Ministry of Education here. Um, so that is a factor that they have to consider. But generally speaking, community colleges will be much more economical. Outside of community colleges, there are a range of other institutions in the US that have extremely affordable tuition rates. And so those tend to be smaller. Those are not necessarily the big names that students know, but they're still very good, high quality. When it comes to cost as well, when we talk to students about looking and comparing the cost of a program that they, or the variety of programs that they're looking at, it's really looking at the total cost because you can't just look at tuition and make a decision that this school is more expensive than the other school. You have to look at what that total cost is. So what is it gonna cost for housing? Are books um, factored into the estimate that the university is giving you? What is the meal plan options? Are there meal plan options? Or is it, you know, if you're in an apartment, are you buying food? So it's really looking at the total cost and also helping students realize that you know, if they get a certain uh, offer for financial aid, that they should look at the whole package and again, not look at that final number to say, if this tuition is 50,000 and this tuition is 40,000, I'm gonna go with the 40,000 because you might get a higher financial aid offering or other incentives to make the tuition cost um, not be the key factor to look at. So cost can be one of those areas that we, we work more closely with students to help them really look at those numbers and make sure that they're looking at something equitable to compare 
and not just line by line because it won't give them an accurate um, reflection of what their cost would be. Was there another question in there that I missed? Sorry, um, so I would like, like to add something. So we really advise you, uh, I mean, the, the, the school counselors, we really advise you and your students to go back to the recordings of the sessions that we have on our Facebook page. Almost every university representative that we hosted, and sometimes in the session you have four university repre representatives from four universities, three universities, five universities. In almost all of these sessions, there is like also a reference to the costs. And as Manisa mentioned, you need, you need to look at the whole cost, not just the cost of, not the tuitions, but you need to pay attention to all of, all, all this re that requires funding and, and uh, uh, money. So this is, this is almost like this is question. The other question is why students study in the United States? Why they, they select the United States? Um, for many reasons, uh, obviously, we're excited to, to promote the United States as a, a study destination. But ideally, what students would be looking for, if, if that's where they're looking to go, is for the diversity of the type of institutions that are available, the sizes, the types, the styles, there's, uh, there's any kind. Um, in terms of geographic diversity, Students are able to, you know, study in a city, but be able to, or vice versa, in a smaller town and be able to travel into a city, experience different parts of um, the U.S. on holidays and breaks. Uh, there's research, there's hands-on practical experience. They have the chance to do internships and really work with key um, professionals in, in those areas that they're studying. I think with flexibility as well, you have students who maybe don't know 100% what they want to study. And unless they're bound by scholarship requirements to make sure they have that major determined for approvals, um, they do have the flexibility to start as an undecided uh, major. Um, some students have too many things in mind that they want to study. And so they do have the opportunity to explore that and you know, hone in on a particular specialization or change majors at a certain point if they realize maybe that where they thought they wanted to follow, that's not the path they want to continue. They can join specialties. So we, we often have students who do a hard science with a, you know, a fine arts um, program and they can double major or include that minor. I think the US educational um, experience also provides students with the opportunity to not give up on those other activities that they've been a part of. So that could be debating, that could be sports, that could be music, that could be acting, performance. Um, those are things that are still part of their academic experience. So really the U.S. is more, about, more than the classroom academic experience. And that is really why um, a student should, should look at the U.S. as a study destination. Thank you so much, Melissa. The other question, universities that match their study options, what's the duration of their study period? Uh, like some brief account about the safety for female students. Mm -hmm. Are some universities disregarding SAT tests? Okay. So lots of so, questions. <laughs> yeah. So with the disregarding of SAT tests, I think that falls with within the um, test optional status that a lot of uh, programs are, are currently following. And again, that has to do with the lack of accessibility or availability of testing centers, um, test dates. So that's where that testing question lies still. Um, regarding student safety and in particular female safety, I think I'll put a little bit of a plug in for a um, panel discussion that we're going to be having with uh, several institutions in the US from women's colleges. So for, for female students who really are interested for that type of experience with all women, there are women's colleges um, that they can look at. From a more broad perspective, the student safety on campus is always of utmost importance. So there are a variety of offices, departments, support systems that are in place for that. So um, students have access to campus escorts if they're working late from a particular part of campus and don't feel comfortable walking at night on their own. There are different buddy systems. 
There are different communication. Um, there's like these blue lights, they call them, and there's phones there. There's different things that are put into place. Um, with students who live in residence halls, there are resident assistants. Um, that live on each floor within those communities to provide programming support, to be a resource for students. You also have the more professional staff with different um, health and wellness offices, medical facilities, security, campus safety and security protocols. So there's a lot of things that are put in place um, to respond to things. In terms of the pre and the preparation portion of it, there are a lot of discussions that are held with students. There's orientations um, when they arrive to kind of help orient them to all of these, but then also to give them a sense of, you know, making good choices. So I think that that's also part of it, uh, making sure that everyone has an understanding of um, their responsibility in that. Great, thank you so much. I hope that we didn't miss any question and please, if I missed your question, feel free to unmute yourselves and uh, tell us an answer directly. Great, thank you so much for joining us. It was great to uh, listen to you, your ideas and your questions and we hope that this session was of use to you. And we really encourage you to follow our Facebook page as Melissa mentioned, yeah. uh, we have on 11th of November, we have a session that will, uh, uh, we, uh, at which we would host representatives from, I think four universities, uh, women, women colleges in the States, that we talk about like what, what are um, women colleges, what are the benefits, what's required and what's provided. So we really encourage you to join if you are interested in this topic and there are some other topics as well. Also today at 7 p.m. there is a session uh, with uh, uh, Kateri alumnus. Uh, he's going to talk about his life, his, his challenges and how he managed to uh, get uh, into life there. So there are lots, lots of sessions. We really encourage you to follow our Facebook page. And uh, thank you so much. And please feel free. I also shared uh, our email, doha at educationusa.org. Feel free to email us. Anytime, if you have any suggestions, if you'd like us to do specific session for your students, or you have specific topics for some training for you, uh, other school counselors, uh, parents. So we are uh, we are here to help you, and our services are meant to help you and students and families here. Thank you so one, much. One other quick thing, because um, we know we have a lot of uh, experienced counselors, so we are always open and interested in working with school counselors to offer sessions, either for students, the parents, or other counselors. So know that it isn't just us presenting to you all, but we know that there is expertise within the counselor community and would love to be at least to amplify um, that expertise and help your peers as well. So we will be looking to hosting some um, regular discussion groups or kind of monthly check-ins potentially where a particular theme can be focused on um, and we will be looking for counselors to kind of be the lead uh, on those discussions each month so be on the lookout for that and feel free to volunteer yourselves in advance by contacting us so again thank you for joining us thank you so much thanks melissa and ishrak thanks a lot thank you thanks thank thanks. you everybody thank you. you have a great you have a great day thanks bye thanks bye.